Hello beautifuls, this is Avrami here, and welcome to Eliza the Innkeeper. Actually, I actually found this game on Steam, um, it was free. This isn't the full game though, it's kind of like the demo type of thing. And this is most, from what I read, it seemed like this visual novel type of, I, I don't know if they call it a visual novel, I just see it as a visual novel. They call it based on around Italian, uh culture yeah italian culture so this is completely different it's very interesting and the music sounds amazing makes me sound like i'm choose your language i'm english that's cool even other languages that's awesome the player does not just act as a protagonist his judgment affects every character and every action his or her excuse me <laughs> Nobleman. Hi, I am a prince and I'm the protagonist of the story. They asked me to give you some details before we can start our adventure. Oh, we're playing through his eyes? I thought we were playing through her eyes. What protagonist, rich man? The player will decide to stay on anyone's side. It will be me. I've got a lot of money. What a pathetic situation. Why don't you try to earn the player's respect? Such a shame. He, hi? Hi or he? Hi, I'm guessing. No one is the protagonist here. Why are you fighting already? I changed the colors to the text to blue because someone said uh, some part they couldn't really see it, but I can't. This blue is really ugly. I need to change it back. <laughs> Eliza or Elisa? I believe it's for Eliza. I don't know. I'm terrible with names. They need to start putting like pronunciations beside these names because I'm terrible with them. I didn't know you were here. You're absolutely right. My dear Eliza, let's ignore these fools. Stay with me. I want to finish my speech. Um, no. I think it's time for me to go. Always the same. I Is that hi or he? Hi? Hi, we're here too, Rebecca and Catherine. Those are some boobage. Why Why do you need that much boobs? <laughs> what are you doing? You two don't have part in our prequel. You will need to wait for the final game to be complete. Eliza, don't go. Oh, too bad. I believe they have a Kickstarter still, so I'll link their Kickstarter as well. Thanks for playing our game. You're about to read the adventure of the bad guys I have just introduced. With your support, maybe we'll be able to tell you the whole story with voice acting and animations. Have fun and enjoy our prequel. Thank you. The air smells like the wood does in the spring, and a, f and a faint scent of flowers seems to soothe the whole room. And the inn, the, the inn was warm, hearty. Eliza, the innkeeper, was never endingly busy running back and forth between her clients, and if she ever stopped for a minute, it was to clean up after a client that left. At the, that moment, the prince sat in front of the bar and was seemingly lost in thought, his gaze fixated on her. Damn, she is so beautiful. <laughs> Every time I see her, I fall in love again, just like the first time. He whispered to himself while taking a sip from his beer. The girl who up until that point was in front of him noticed that her only client was staring at her and decided to get a bit closer, leaning forward to clean up that part of the bar. Have I ever told you that I live in a castle? Still busy cleaning, she leaned on the bar, which was still wet. The prince could see, could start seeing through her shirt. Oh, really? You never tell me, so I assume you're some kind of nobleman? Full of himself, the young man rose from his stool. I am, without a doubt, one of the most worthy between those who bear this title. Smiling, the innkeeper instinctively paused and turned to her guest. Resting her head on her hands, she looked interested. Do you mean that you're not the other, not like the other nobles around? Wow, you can see everything from this angle. Great job, guy. Of course now, what do you think I am? Who do you think I am? I see many nobles come and, come and go at my inn. However, you're the most fascinating young man in here now. The room was actually empty aside from the two. So what do you have more than the other nobles? The prince took a deep breath. 
Did she really say those words? He swallowed his whole glass of beer. I own the most majestic castle in all of Florence. And what else? She is so close. So close that I can smell her. Her scent is sensual. I've never found such a smell. I would love to caress her. Should I try to? Maybe I should. Suddenly a weird feeling overwhelmed him. Excuse me? I believe it's time for you to wake up. What? It was a dream. We should wake up now. The image of the innkeeper, which at first was crystal clear and beautiful as a rose in a warm spring morning, started fading, while the tone of her voice seemed to lose intensity. Such a shame. Beautiful things don't last long, indeed. The prince woke up slightly dazed. Just a dream. He felt sorely disappointed as he brought a hand to his forehead and tried to stand up from his lying position. Oh Jesus, look at all that stuff on the ground. Oh my god, that poor flower. My head hurts really bad. What could I ever have done last night? He looked around, saw broken glasses, bottles, plates, which were pretty easy clues. Have I been robbed? He sluggishly muttered. Had it really been a burglary, he would have been left naked as expensive as clothes were. What could have possibly happened? I feel so sick. This room has a weird smell. The windows were closed and their drapes shut, so the sunlight barely entered the room, and despite the silence, the prince's head kept hurting really bad. The only thing I remember is how tired I was in, and I went to bed, but I do not recognize this place. I should be in another inn. Ouch. Thinking is not helping. I think I'll sleep some more. Nausea and headache are definitely not best friends when one wants to use his head. Moreover, it's really hard to give up such a nice dream. The sun had ris risen and risen only a few hours ago. Why would someone suffer to wake up so early in the morning? Especially if he does not need a job to earn a living. Back to bed, investigate. Hell no, investigate. Why would I go back to bed? No, I can't really do this. It's impossible to go back to bed. There's a disgusting stench in here. Deeply disturbed by the smell and the filth of the room, the prince couldn't help but feel shocked at the mess inside. Usually, any displaced item is enough to, wake, to make me lose my sleep. Whatever could have happened. In truth, that wasn't really a good time to fall back asleep. Such memory lapse should really not be neglected. Maybe I'm worrying too much about it. He said to himself, trying to ignore the pulsing pain in his head and the nausea. Still, it's probably a good idea to take a look around. The room was a pigsty hazardous even with all the shattered plates and glasses. Moreover, some of the chairs were turned over, the fireplace was spouting ashes on the floor, and the bed sheets were on the floor as well. First of all, let's open the window. I don't think I can bear the stench without vomiting. So he opened the window and lingered there for a moment to take a deep breath of fresh air while he was thinking back to the dream he just had. I was definitely dreaming about something interesting. What was it, though? The white wet curtains the prince was leaning on reminded him of the dreams he thought he had forgotten one second ago. Uh... Okay. Of course, now that I recall, I was dreaming about Eliza. Now that I think of it, yesterday afternoon, after speaking with the merchant, I wanted to go see her. He slowly buttoned up his vest as he focused his thoughts on reconstructing the recent events. Now I remember. I was arguing with that merchant for the sale of my castle, when I, at some point we decided to walk towards this inn to wrap up the business. When everything got settled, we started drinking, and then I can't remember anything else. A worrying feeling of anxiety filled with the mind of the young man, who kept brooding, brooding, brooding about his memory lapse about the past night. What if the, that blasted merchant made me sign that deal? In panic, he started rummaging around to find his clothes, which were strewn across the room. I can't see any bag filled with gold on the table. Drunk as I was, for what I can remember, I could have get, even gifted my castle away. After a few moments, minutes, his cloth... Clothes started to pop up, scattered in every corner of the room as if they had been hidden. It was actually quite an effort to collect them. Somehow his gloves managed to end up in the furthest cor corner under the bed. Stretching as much as he could, the prince extended his hand and felt something other than his gloves. He was certain he heard a faint metallic sound, maybe a coin? A sword. What's this? His hope was to find gold, some gold, however, as he moved the sheets away, the only thing he managed to see under the shadow of the bed was a silver blade. He sighed and with, 
with some precautions, he pulled out what was all by was what was by all accounts a sword. What is this doing here? He asked himself while wielding the object and looking for more details. A sword. Why would a sword be in my room? The blade was completely made of silver, his hilt covered with brown cloth. It looked more like a decoration than a weapon. The prince was tense and hesitated. Alright, I believe I'll take it with me. If someone was so foolish that they left it behind, they're lost. He shrugged and smiled. He turned and immediately saw the scabbard leaning on the wall. With the state this room is in, I'm not sure I should walk walk down to pay. It'll cost me a fortune to compensate for all the damages. I think it'd be better to just leave here a few coins and get out quickly. Calmly he fastened his belt just right and sheathed the sword with care to avoid damaging it. Great, time to go. He's gonna... S okay, we unlocked the sword, but he just left his... Everything there? What the hell? That's horrible. Uh oh. Sounds like someone knocked at the door. Who could it be? Is it a waiter asking for money? I should really go. The knocking at the door became louder. I know you're in there. Open the door. Recognizing the merchant's voice, the prince froze. He even stopped breathing to make as little noise as he could. What the heck do I do now? I'm tired of waiting. I've got the papers to sign here. Remember the deal we made yesterday afternoon? Wait a second, if he came here to make me sign the documents, it means yesterday he wasn't able to get anything out of me. My fears were unfounded. I'm getting ready, give me a moment to dress up. I have no time to lose waiting for you to titivate yourself. Open this damn door. The prince was busy fixing up his clothes as well as he could, trying to remember all the details of the deal he agreed upon the day before. It would have been unforgivable to appear without having any idea of how to resume the talks. What kind of impression will I give if he sees all this mess? I will never be able to clean up all of this. He said, giving up, he walked, to, walked up to the door. Actually, I thought last evening. Why don't you clean up a bit before going to bed? His shame became so unbearable that the prince impulsively jumped out of the room. Here I am. Can we take a, <laughs> can we take a seat downstairs? I would like some privacy. Your room would be perfect for that. One neat... What need is there to stay in the room when we can talk down, walk downstairs and have a drink? I don't really feel like drinking after last night. No, please, let's walk down. I'll offer you around. No, I really am not feeling like it. I mean it. Don't make me beg you. For what I care, you're free to drink all you want afterwards. Please, let's go in. I want to close this up quickly. What if I offer you lunch? Fancy a steak or some cake? We could even invite a fine lady to lunch with us. What about this? What the hell are you hiding in that room? You came to the point of offering me a meal? This is so unlike you. Quit the excuses, please. Make way. The glare of the prince hearing those words became almost threatening. I'm dead serious. It is a bad idea to enter. He added interposing himself between the door and the other person. Seeing the scene, the merchant gave up insisting and finally decided to listen to the prince. He turned and started walking down the stairs. Once to the bottom of the stairs, they picked the table in a less crowded corner so that they could have some quiet while they were t while they talked. That sword just happens to be right there. Before I sign, I would like to know what happened last night. My mind is clouded. I don't remember much at all. He said, sitting on the stool very patiently. The merchant started explaining the events of last night without omitting a single detail. Last night we came to this end because the sun was setting and we finally managed to agree on the last details of our deal. So last night you did not coerce me into signing against my will, right? I wish. Last night I squandered a fortune to have him drink. But this guy is stingy, even while drunk. Who do you think I am? I am an honorable person in business. Farewell. So, where are the papers? Let's not waste any more time. Bring them out. The merchant brought out the written deal, but it was easy to tell that any kind of excitement had disappeared from his face. He certainly did not expect an easy deal, however, the unexpected hurriedness of the prince was getting to his nerves. This is the final deal we agreed on yesterday. I urge you to sign it now so I can leave the, this hole quickly, and I will not have to deal with you again. After a quick read, the prince grabbed a pen from his pocket, inscribing a quick and clean signature of the deal. He's glittery as always. I sign, now give me the money. Don't worry about that. 
The prince saw the merchant about to style the papers away in his bag and had a sudden doubt. He swiftly grabbed the arm of the merchant, stopping him. Has he noticed? What does he what what does this part mean? Are you talking about this small variation? It's only fifty gold coins, just a tiny detail. How could you dare modify your proposal without telling me? I saw that your castle was in need of some renovations. This calls for an additional expenses. Lowering the amount I'm offering for the purchase was the very least I had to do. And you took care of not notifying me? Did you think I would not notice? The sun I deducted is yet another kind of con concession I made. For your castle, I would need to spend at least double that. It requires extensive renovations. If I did not say that before, it was only to spare you more concerns. This, this all makes no sense. For you, perhaps. Are you really hoping that I'll agree to this? Is he like charging the prince more money f for renovating? And he didn't even tell the prince about that? It's kind of screwed up. I would, yes. You have a little choice after all. Uh, confront, slip away. Well, oh, holy damn. Should we confront him about this? Stick up our guns, or well, our sword? Or should we run away? No, we're going to confront him. You can't boss the prince around like that. Just don't kill him. Okay. The merchant crushed his arm and made himself more comfortable on the stool. He took a look at the prince as he was rereading the contract. He can think it as much as he wants. I have no wish to give more concessions. Are you kidding me? He asked. Now that's serious as you put that in the documents. In such business, I always am serious. Fifty gold coins are no small change. I'm a merchant. I know the difference between a fair deal and a ripoff. Right. You should feel honored to have such a seller as me. I'm part of the nobility after all. After we seal this deal and after the voice gets around, you will have many more clients willing to make business with you. The merchant was not convinced by this argument at all. He sneered and replied swiftly. They, these are empty words. You are a prince. You were once rich. However, you, with your father, squandered away all you had. Do not say one more word for your own sake. The prince looked extremely frustrated, rage and anxiety showing on his face. The merchant on face kept talking. You need this money. I cannot see any alternative for you if you do not take this deal now. What are we going to do? The nobility has two defining char characteristics, pride and dignity. In front of such a blatant humiliation, one of these two failed in the young prince. I'm already screwing up, guys. Bound by rage, he jumped forward, threw down his stool, and unsheathed his sword. I told you to shut up. Are you deaf? This is not about money anymore. This is your life on the line. I didn't want to kill the guy. I just wanted to threaten him a little. <laughs> the merchant one moment ago was so relaxed and confident, transformed completely. He stood up shakingly as his face turned white and he raised his hands. Uh, let's keep calm, please. This is no need for this excess. It's, it is just business. I had no intention of showing disrespect, but that's what you did. If this is a business, indeed, as you say, then you certainly do not look like a shrewd businessman. In fact, I'm surprised that you're still alive. As the prince near the end of his sentence, his blade near the neck of the merchant. The scene lasted only a few seconds, but to these people, they felt like minutes or hours even. The merchant thought he was done for, but luck, usually not taking any part, of, part in these occasions, sided with him. Stop, or I will have to call the guards. A waiter came to the two just as just at the right time. His intervention effectively diffused the tense situation. Do not meddle in other people's business, boy. The sword very close to the merchant's neck started shaking as a host of bad thoughts and doubts were filling the mind of the prince. Damn, why do you have to intervene now? The satisfaction could cost me my freedom. I cannot make my make any mistakes. You know, now that I think about it, I could have ran away. So then I wouldn't have to hear his mumbo jumbo. <laughs> Please, you're right. Let's put this away. I'm convinced. I will give you these 50 gold coins. No, this affront is too great. 50 coins are, are not nearly enough. I demand double that in compensation. Double. Please be reasonable. It is you who has to weigh your next words well, my dear merchant. Leaving this last phrase hanging as a threat, the prince grabs his hilt his hilt strongly as he draws the sword into the table. 
His motion was so quick and sudden that everyone in the room jolted. The waiter pushed aside the crowd behind him and left the room without saying anything else. So now we got a broken sword. Great. This is what we're gonna say. Um I don't oh we also unlocked some monies. Cash monies. Is everything fine now? Can this music go away? It's kinda scary. Alright, well that is where we're gonna be saving. Um, I'm not sure how to feel about this. I mean, of course, it's not like the typical visual novels I usually play, where it's instantly jumping in to, like, character development of who you can go after. I'm kind of not quite sure about this game. Um, for first impressions, the music is amazing. The art is it's quite different but I feel like the plot is lacking right now maybe because I've been reading other visual novels and played other games that this one isn't reaching the the I don't know the word it's not satisfying me right now but I'm gonna continue playing it for you guys and I want to continue to see like how f maybe maybe it'll get better in the long run but for right now it's not the best right now but that's my opinion. But thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.